Hey guys, how's everybody doing today? I was just doing some errands earlier, took the dog for a walk. Uh, I cleaned a fish tank the other day, it's looking pretty good as you can see. As you can see they're pretty happy in there, not uh, bothering too much. And uh, after that, because I do about 20%, uh, maybe 25% water change all the time, I'm going to have to uh, do up some new water. And I thought I'd show you what that got, entails a little bit. I think I showed you in a previous vlog how I set up my water. I got my RODI uh, system there. That's tapped into a, like a two-way valve on the washing machine area. So the good water goes into the system, goes about its business, comes out. The good uh, water that I need for the tank goes in the blue tube, which I put into this big gallon. It's about a three-gallon jug. And then the bad water that comes through the red tube goes down into the drain that the washing machine also dispenses into. So that's basically what I got. I got it set up here. So I'm just going to move it in there, turn it on. As you can see, one of my filters is getting to the point where I'm going to have to replace it. It's getting to, uh, it changes color as it goes on. And it should be like the top color all the way through to the bottom. So that's going to be needing a new filter pretty soon. But uh, that's starting to drain in there. Just little by little. It takes about an hour to fill it up to that line that I have. And then uh, I set my watch timer on my Apple Watch. And then we go from there. So now that I got the uh, fish water running and getting started, uh, I'll probably do three or four jugs of that. So I can do the water change next time on the fish tank here. So let's get uh, talking about this 6D that I just did. Uh, back in December I put the uh, Magic Lantern on here and I've been putzing around with it. I've always been uh, a photographer. I like photography very much. But I also tend to head towards the automated uh, systems and settings on my camera. So I wanted to delve in a little deeper into my camera and just see what I can do with it. And uh, what we have here on the first screen and it's I'm going to break this up into a series. There's like four, two, four, six, eight. There's like nine screens on here. Um, separate screens, but I'll probably just do a few of the basic ones. Today I'm going to do the exposure one. It uh, involves the white balance ISO, shutter, aperture, picture style. A lot of the settings that you find on the Magic Lantern are also the same menu settings that you can find in the Canon settings. I got my little setup here with my iPhone so I can get a close up of the menus as I go over them with you. We're going to jump right in here in Magic Lantern. When you first bring up the Magic Lantern menu by pushing the trash can, you'll see that under the exposure settings, you got the white balance, ISO, shutter, aperture, picture style, exposure lock, exposure presets exposure override and exposure simulation and the top one there is your uh, white balance and it's currently set at auto which is also the same as what the Canon menu will say if we were to switch over to that one go into white balance auto white balance hit that and here you see the settings for the Canon where it gives you the sunny daylight is 5200 now the 5200 is the Kelvin temperature and typically the higher the number the more whiter and blue it is and the lower the number the more yellow it is and as you go through into their menu you can see they have the different settings for daylight shade cloudy tungsten light white fluorescent light and then your flash custom and Kelvin which is the K that they have designated there and currently it's set at 6500 if I were to click OK go back out of that menu and then back into the Magic Lantern one, white balance is also set at 6500. So they coincide when you change one in one, it changes in the other. What Magic Lantern allows you to do, if I were to go into the 6500, I can tweak it just a little bit up or down to 7500 if I need it a little more whiter, or if I wanted to go lower to make it a little more warmer or amber looking, I would go down into the 6100. Now if I were to go set that and go out of that menu go back into that it would display in 6100 on there so if you knew you were going to be shooting in a certain situation say a shade or a cloudy day 
you could set your camera as far as under that 6000K and that would give you an accurate white balance for that scenery. Now as we move along down to the settings here, past flash and into custom and K, you'll see that it's currently set at 3400. Oops. Currently set to 3400 and as if I move this wheel up here, you can go between all the numbers going from 45, 50, 6,000, all the way up to 10,000 I believe it will stop at, somewhere in that range, and that's where it stops. And if you were to set it there, 10,000K, which would be very blue and very white, and go out of that menu and go into the Magic Lantern menu, you can see that the white balance is currently set to 10,000 on there also. Now as we set hit the set button that also allows you to go even higher but as you can see down here in the yellow notation that the extended white balance values are only applied to movies not photos so you still have your 10,000 and if I go the other way and jump past these markings I should scroll around back to until that yellow notation goes away to about 2500 is the lowest that we can do for photos but as we go lower as you can see that extended white balance values notification comes back once again so 2500 is the lowest being like an amber yellow that you could set so if you're more familiar with your t color temperatures knowing that the lower the number the more yellow it is the higher the number the more blue it is you could probably find your settings a lot more quicker than if you were to go through the settings on the Canon menu. I set that at 5200 in the Magic Lantern menu. We'll pop over to here and as you can see the white balance on the Canon is also set to 5200. So when you compare those two values you can see that you can set the Kevin value high and low on either one. I mean the Canon menu has a much nicer display as far as uh, if you're outdoors or cloudy day, shady day, where in the Magic Lantern menu it just gives you the Kelvin temperature values. As you learn to use the camera more and more, or if you get more familiar with the temperature, you know it, the lower the number, the more yellow the picture, the higher the number, the more blue the picture. The tank behind me here has a uh, temperature of 5500, so it's like mid-range daylight. Uh, they say about 5500 to 6500 is daylight. Now if I were to go into the settings here on the white balance and set the tungsten as far as that, which is 3200, go out of here, take a quick picture of the tank. You can see how blue that is under that, those conditions with the 3200. However, if I go back into the menu and set it for the daylight of 5200 which is just below the familiar setting of 5500. Take another quick picture of it. You can see that it has a little blue but it's not quite as blue as the previous picture with the 3200. As you can see that between the two photos that I took of the fish tank there, the 3200 which has the same ISO and shutter speed as this 5500 one, it gives you a much more accurate white balance. Now if you go into the Magic Lantern menu here, on the next level is the ISO setting and that's currently set at Auto. And if we were to go over to the Canon ISO speed settings, you can see that it's also set to Auto. Now this is another menu setting that corresponds with each of them. Whatever you set in one, it displays in the other and changes in the other. I didn't see any difference as far as the ISO setting. If you were to go into it, you could scroll through using the wheel or using the toggle back and forth, set it, go back out of that menu, and if you were to go back into the Canon, you would see that it's also set at 800. So that's a matter of preference as far as you how you want to display your settings and how you want to change your settings. I did notice if you go into the Magic Lantern menu through the trash can and then hit the menu button, you can display all the menu settings with a lot quicker access to them than you do in the previous menu without hitting the menu that uh, brings up the cannon. So what you would do from your main menu, hit the trash can, 
once your magic lantern menu pops up you would hit the menu button that you usually get for the cannon and that brings up all the other ones. Now if you were to go into the shutter menu of the magic lantern system you can see that you can change your shutter speed by toggling back and forth or the wheel can take you back and forth between your settings. You set that, go back out of the menu and it will show up on the top exactly what the shutter speed you're using but typically what you can do is just change typically what you can do is just change the shutter speed by moving this dial right here and remember I am in manual settings because you're playing with all the different settings because as far as the Canon menu I did not see it and I could be wrong but I did not see any settings for shutter speed in the Canon menus So your only access for shutter speed would be through the magic lantern menu or the dial on the top of your screen, which I find to be a lot more simpler and easier to use for shutter speed. Going down the line as far as aperture, you also have that available to you in the magic lantern menu. That works as similar as the other ones. I haven't played around with the last two settings that much. They may give you a wider range than your typical typical settings. But as you can see, if you did the back wheel here on the 6D, you can scroll through your aperture settings too. There should be there's 5.6. If I were to go back into the Magic Lantern one, it's also set for 5.6. If we jump down into the picture style menu setting, you can see it replicates pretty much what you'll find in the Canon as far as auto, standard, portrait, landscape neutral. If I go out of that, jump over to picture style on the Canon, and you also have the same thing, auto, standard, portrait, neutral, faithful. Set it for neutral, get out of that one, go back over to the magic lantern, and you can see it's set for neutral. If you go into exposure lock here, and I haven't played with it too much, you have to hit the Q button as you can see the little Q at the end of the line there. It gives you the three options of time, aperture, and ISO. And then underneath it will tell you as far as what each of the settings will do. When you change the time, Magic Lantern adjusts the aperture and ISO to keep the exposure. If you change the aperture, Magic Lantern adjusts the time and ISO to keep the exposure. And if you adjust the ISO, Magic Lantern adjusts the time and aperture to keep exposure. Like I said, I haven't played with it too much. I'll probably be exploring exposure lock a little bit more down the road and I'll be bringing you more of that of part of that series. If you go into exposure by hitting the Q button, it gives you the uh, op two options there to quickly, be, to quickly toggle between two exposure presets and you can either press your set button or your info button. Like I said, I'm going to be exploring that one a little bit more. At this moment, I haven't really delved into it. Exposure override, that only works in live view mode. If I were to bring that up and then go back into the menu, I can now select it to on. It's for, I can select the exposure override now. As you can see, it's doing some flickering and that's inherent with the software that you're loading on here. Uh, but basically it's a low level manual exposure control that bypasses the Canon limits. So I'm going to turn that off at the moment. Get back out of live exposure. At least I think I did. And the same with exposure simulation. That only works in live mode also. As you can see I'm still in toggling between the two. So I can turn that on. It's giving a little problems there, so I'm going to turn that off. So that covers in the, uh, let me get out. Let me just get out of that menu, get out of there. Menu, menu, okay. So that covers the uh, white balance uh, menu. Like I said, I'm, I'm just playing with it. I will delve into a little bit more and go down the menus in this series. This is just part one of 
how many parts I'm going to do. Uh, let me know down in the comments below if you enjoyed it. If you didn't like it, let me know too. But like I said, I've been in photography for many years now and I've been using uh, film all the way up to digital. And I've been probably using the crutch and the auto stuff is more than I should. So I just want to delve back into manual settings and just learning the, the camera ins and outs. And I think the Magic Lantern will help in that situation. And just delving into the Canon menus too. As you can see, they were pretty identical in a few of the situations. So we'll just delve into that in future uh, parts of this series. And I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, uh, leave a comment down below if you did or if you didn't. And don't forget to subscribe if you do enjoy it and you want to continue on learning about this Magic Lantern series. And I will see you next time. Have a good one.